So these are the derivatives of your inverse trig functions. And of course, they're never just going to ask us, what's the derivative of inverse sine? They're going to combine it with all our product rule and chain rule and quotient rule and stuff. And the trickiest one is always the chain rule. How does that look like? And so it's always, if it's this inverse sine of something, it's that something squared, whatever that is, gets kind of plugged into there. And then, of course, times the derivative of whatever that was, whatever that inside function was. Uh, so this first one, we're taking the inverse cosine. And over here, I put the note that the cos are just the negatives of these. So the derivative of inverse cosine is just negative 1 over square root of 1 minus x squared. Inverse cotangent, negative that. Inverse cosecant, negative that. So you don't have to memorize three new formulas if you know those. All right, so let's get to it. Uh, so this is going to be following that template, negative 1 over the square root of 1 minus this whole chunky thing squared times the derivative of that inside. And then just cleaning that up, that'll be just 15x squared over the square root of 1 minus negative 5 squared is a positive 25, and then multiply those powers x to the 6th. So we get that. Uh, we do it again over here. Uh, we're going to have 1 over the square root of 1 minus this chunk squared times the derivative of that chunk. And so we clean that up. It's just going to be negative 4x over the square root of 1 minus positive 4x to the 4th. We do it again. 1 over, tangent's actually the nicest one. There's no square root, it's positive. It's like, oh, thanks, tangent. So it's going to be 1 over 1 plus that chunk squared times the derivative of that chunk. And then just cleaning that up, 8x cubed over 1 plus 4x to the 8th. And then this one's the nastiest. Uh, it's got the weird absolute value. It's all backwards, minus, ick. So cosecant will be the negative of this one, negative 1 over the absolute value of 4x squared times the square root of 4x squared squared minus 1. So I'm wondering, did they bother? Yeah. You can drop the absolute value here. Oh, sorry. I forgot to multiply by the derivative of the inside, of course, times an 8x. You can drop the absolute value here because 4x squared will always be positive. x squared is positive already, 4 is positive. So the absolute value is redundant. We don't need it. Uh, cleaning this up, 8 divided by 4 is 2. Kept that negative there. x on the top will cancel with one of those x's on the bottom. So I'll still have an x on the bottom. Then I'll have 16x to the 4th minus 1. And yeah. They always put their negatives out there. I don't, I don't like it. I like it on the top. Um, but you can throw it out in the front if you'd like. It's the same. But I kind of like it up there. Okay, there you go.